And um, I reckon you just use one of these. So I'll be back. Pass that on. Yep. Someone from another. Just um, do this. Or, or, or that. And um, yeah, yeah. put it in the pocket. Hello and welcome. How, how good is this? How good is this? That honours is, is beckoning, this, um, this wonderful honours honor, year. Uh, the structure of today's talk, where you're going to find out about this wonderful vistas of, of honours, uh, I like waving my hands. Um, the structure is as follows. I'm going to babble for a few microseconds, and then you're going to have a quintet of, of legends who are going to speak to you. Uh, the legendary Michael Grace. Uh, who'll speak to you about um, uh, what it's like to be an honours coordinator and an honours student. Then you'll have um, a, a, a trio of uh, legendary s students, uh, Casey, Justin and Sharan, who'll tell you what it's really like to do honours because they've just done honours and are doing honours and so they can tell you what it's really like. And then uh, the legendary Margie will tell you about uh, the nitty gritty fine details that you need. Um, my name is David Packard. I'm the Associate Dean of Education. I'm uh, your MC for today. If I was to ask the question, what is honours, I can give you a three-word answer, uh, and you'll see multiple facets of, of opinion which you can build up a, a real picture. But if I was to ask the question, what is honours, and answer it in three words, uh, three slightly vague words, I'd say it's intense, it's formative, and it's valued. Intense, and it's a real hot, hot house of a year, an intense year, very much a, a defining feature of honours. Intense, hot house, uh, lo lots of pressure, yes, but also lots of support to take you f through um, to um, literally a new level. Formative, it takes you through, through to a new level. Honour students are special, they're invincible. They, can, they have this attitude that, you know, I put my mind to anything and I can do it, and they bloody well can, right, uh, because of the formative experience. So intense, it's formative, it's also valued, and when I say valued, I mean valued by employers, uh, points that will um, come up a little bit later, so intense formative and valued is my three-word answer to the question of what is honours. If I wanted to give you a little more detail, I'd say that it's a, it can be a separate standalone one-year course or part of a four-year course that has honours. Uh, it's offered in most science areas of study. Uh, there's also cross-disciplinary um, honours available. Lastly, I'd say that um, uh, it's busted up into two bits. Again, you'll hear about this, but coursework and research. Coursework, the most advanced kick-ass, um, cutting-edge coursework you've ever done. Uh, again, it's hard, but you support it, right? Uh, coursework and research. And when I say research, I mean in the strong sense of the term. You're actually working on real research problems, uh, real research problems with real research world leaders um, uh, that no one knows the answer to. You're doing real research. So coursework and research are the two facets, key facets of honours. Regarding the why, I've already mentioned uh, the enhancement of employability. That special something isn't just a, a vague hand-waving me saying it enhances your employability. It, it seriously enhances your employability, uh, is the first point. Uh, the challenge, the reward, and again, the, the balance between it being bloody hard, uh, but you're really, really strongly supported, is part of that challenge. Uh, and you know, why do something that's easy? It's rewarded because it's formative. It's formative because it's challenging, so you grow a lot. Uh, it's a difficult year, as you'll hear, but also rewarding. I'd, I'd like to think it's also fun, but that'll shine through from the talks that um, come, I dare say. Uh, lastly, it prepares you for postgrad studies. Uh, but I've been babbling too much, so let's pass over to the legendary Mike Grace. Round of applause for Mike. Old, doesn't it? A truly legendary. <laughs> yeah, a truly legendary means you're old. Okay, thanks, David. Right. So obviously you're here today because you're interested in honours. You know you want to do it, or you're thinking about it as a potential option. My first and most important point: if you 
want to do honours, you're thinking about it, go for it. It is a scientific finishing school. You all know throughout your undergraduate degree, which you are presumably finishing now or sometime in the near future, you have been spending long, long hours studying for exams, writing reports on experiments that we know work, otherwise we wouldn't give them to you, or if they don't work it's because you've stuffed up, the academic stuffed up, or the equipment stuffed up, one of the others, and it's never you. That's not what science is about. Science isn't about answering exam questions and doing really well on the exams. It's not about repeating what people have done for years and years in the past, maybe better, maybe slightly worse. Science is about discovery. Science is about pushing the boundaries of human knowledge. You in an honours year are going to be part of that challenge. You will be doing science possibly for the first time. You've been learning about science, and I'm not denigrating what you learn in undergraduate because it's really important in terms of building blocks for going on and doing science. Every one of you doing an honours project will be doing something nobody has ever done before. How cool is that? You can say you are doing something completely unique. You are not doing it by yourselves. There's lots of support networks, and I'll touch on that briefly. But I also want to pick up David's point about it being highly regarded by employers. Why? Because throughout the honours year and successful completion of honours proves you have mastered a lot of skills that are highly valued in the employment workplace. It's not just the science you know. In fact, the chances of you getting a job directly related to your individual honours project are probably pretty small. You get employed because you've shown the capability of following through on a year-long project. You're demonstrating communication skills. You have to get up on your two hind legs and talk about it to people. You have to write a report. The report is due in on a particular date. The tyranny of a deadline. You've met that when you finish honours. You're showing a whole range of initiative skills, communication skills, all of these intangibles that employers love. I've worked closely with a lot of people in the public service and some of the senior people there say, give me a good graduate and in particular an honours graduate and we can teach them the nuts and bolts of the job but we want bright, enthusiastic people that can communicate, can engage people with the science and have shown an aptitude for thinking about problems and solving them. So really, really valuable things apart from the fact that you've discovered some, you know, corollary to the Higgs boson or something like that, which is just a minor thing. Um, <laughs> a little physics joke. First time I've ever made one of those. Probably the last. Um, so you're getting a lot of experience in research. Some of you will possibly go on and do PhDs. Many of you won't. That's absolutely fine. But you'll get a feeling for researchers about what science and scientists do when they're not standing in front of classrooms talking at you. It is a prerequisite for postgraduate study and also, and don't downplay this, it's an incredible personal challenge. You get to the end of your honours year and I know we've got three speakers that will be hopefully feeling this in about six, seven weeks' time and you can say at the end of the year, I bloody well did that. I achieved something remarkable. I have gone from learning about science to being a scientist. It is a personal challenge. So when should you do it? Sooner rather than later. If you can go on and do it, if you're ready to do it, um, next year, go on and do it next year. If you want to defer it, that's fine. And Margie will tell you a little bit about um, the time frame you need to complete or start on as after finishing your degree. I think it's about five years, isn't it? Yeah. So you can defer it. Um, often people will defer it for six months or a year to travel or do something else. That's fine. If you're feeling burnt out after a bit of a holiday, then maybe defer it. It is possible um, to do it mid-year in some disciplines, so please check with the honours coordinator in the school you are considering doing honours in. Your one piece of homework for today is to find out who your honours coordinator is. If, if you're doing chemistry, that's moi, but every school will have an honours coordinator. Go and talk to that person. Make sure you're known to them. 
express an interest, ask all the questions you have specific to those schools. I don't know the answers for physics or biology or geoscience or maths. Go and find a person. Part-time options are available if you do need to work, but it is really hard yakka. Some people do it and do it really well, but my hat's off to them at the end of the year because they have done it really tough. Trying the last month of honours when you're writing up your thesis, maybe the last six weeks, starting next week for you guys, um, you are working intensely finishing your report and everything else is largely excluded from your life apart from eating and sleeping. It's tough, that last six weeks. So trying to do that part-time is really, really challenging. In some, in some cases, it's, um, not an op you know, it's not an option to do it full-time, so please talk to your honours coordinator. We will try and make it work for you, but be aware it is very, very challenging. So where should I do my project? Well, first, the obvious first answer to that is in the discipline in which you qualify for doing honours. So if you've met all of the honours entry requirements for chemistry, you do your honours in chemistry. But what project should you select? Chemistry last night, for the first time, ran a research showcase where we had all the academics putting up posters and invited the third year students to wander around and find out what the research areas of each individual academic are because you guys only get to see a small percentage of the academics within the school. So we tried that, it worked really well, so maybe that's a note for other schools to try that next year. But talk to academics. More important than the individual project is the research group you are working in. You want to work in a research group where obviously you've got to be interested in the general area, but you get along with the academics, you get along with the other people in the group, um, you feel supported because you're going to spend a very intense year in that research group. You are no longer a part of a class of 50 or 60 in third year or 100 if you're in biology. You are working in a group of four, five, six, eight people. And you know, obviously, spending a lot of time in that group, you're going to need to um, get on with them. So who do you want to work with? I am not going to stand here and tell you which academics you should work with and which ones, and there are only a few perhaps, I'd be lying if I said there were none, that you should possibly avoid. So how do you find that information? You talk to the demonstrators, talk to honours students, talk to PhD students, get the goss. Again, it's a bit of homework. Go and talk to academics. If you're interested in a particular academic's research, you've seen a paper, or you've heard them talk, go and talk to them. If they are enthusiastic about their work and want to, you know, they're almost spilling over with enthusiasm, telling you about what you know, they're doing, how it's exciting, what your research project might be, that's ticking all the boxes. But if they say, oh yeah, I'm going to do this next year and you might fit in and uh, you probably won't do very well, that's probably telling you something as well. So it is really, really important to pick your supervisor and your group. That is more important than the details of the project itself in 99% of the cases. So how do you find out? You talk to demonstrators. You talk to postgraduate students, honours students, anybody you know, and go and talk to the supervisors. You are interviewing them. You are trying to find out what they are like as people, how they interact with you. Could I spend a year working with this person is a question you should be asking. Really, really important. Why do I say it's more important than the project itself? Because whatever project you work on, that will become yours. It's your baby. You will grow to love it and perhaps hate it towards the end of the year just for a very short period of time. But it is yours. You own it. You're the only person in the history of the world that's ever done that. That's cool. But the environment you're in is really critical because it is a tough year. There is no question about that. And I'll come back to that point right at the end. So what is, what's involved? You've heard a little bit about it. You'll hear more from our honours students and from Argy a little bit later. Depending on the individual school, it's a mixture. It's always a mixture of coursework or some other um, types of assessment and the project. The relative weightings are dependent on the individual school. And you're conducting research, so making hypotheses, doing experiments, analysing the data, changing your ideas, writing it all up at the end, and presenting it in the form of a thesis 
on a particular day, which is usually the last day of um, semester four, semester two, which is, this year is October 31, isn't it? 30, is it? Okay. That's a Friday, but whatever. Yeah, it's that last Friday. That's when your thesis is due in. And then in some schools you have to do a presentation on that and a thesis defence. Words that strike fear into the hearts of chemistry students in particular. So, a couple of really important points. Am I really good enough to do honours? If you're good enough to make the entry requirements, you are good enough to do a brilliant honours year. We find that ability in undergraduate levels, your ability to do exams, your ability to recall short-term stuff and regurgitate it on an exam paper is usually a very poor indicator of how well you do in honours. Sometimes people who are great in undergraduate go on and do great honours years. But sometimes we find that the best honours students are the ones that just scraped in. They got 69.6, .6, which is rounded up to 70, and they still do a brilliant honours year. Because succeeding in honours is not about your ability to answer an exam question. It's all of the intangible things, how well you stick at your project. When it's going really well, that's easy. When it's not going so well, that's more challenging. And I dare say, and again our honours students might want to expand on this a little bit, sometimes your honours project doesn't work quite the way you wanted to, or things don't work at all. That's research. If we knew what we were doing, it wouldn't be research. That's a famous quote you can look up from somewhere else. So, your grades are not necessarily a good indication of how well you will fare. So, it's a much more of an individual approach, but you are not alone. You are working in both a research group and in a cohort of honours students. Many, many years ago, when I did honours, about seven years ago, I made a lot of friends. Most of them are still my friends now. It's a really intense experience and you're sharing it with a really cool group of people. And again, that's a really important part of the honours, the sense of uh, camaraderie that is developed. So, it's a year of challenge. Honours, I look back on it now, and even still, you know, seven years ago, it was the hardest year I did, including finishing a PhD. My honours year was the hardest year I did. It was also by far the best year of my uh, whole university career. Because I went from learning science to being a scientist. And in the end, isn't that why we're all here? So give it a go. Thank you. Next, we've got a legendary lineup of three students, the first of which is Casey Blundell. Round of applause for Casey. Okay, so I'm from the School of Earth, Atmosphere and Environment and my, my honours project is based in structural geology and geophysics. And, you know, to be honest, when I finished the end of my undergrad, um, I really questioned about whether I was capable of doing honours, as you said. Um, but in my head, I sort of had half a thought that I'd be interested in seeing what it would be like for me and whether I could pursue it further, perhaps doing a PhD. So... My area is in uh, far north Queensland, uh, about 100 kilometres out of Mount Isa, so just out of a township called Cloncurry. It's quite remote, um, and my studies concern the structural architecture and the geophysical response of an IOCG, or a potential IOCG deposit, which is a iron oxide copper gold system. So I started here in 2010 as an art science student. My initial purpose was to transfer into law science and to use chemistry as my major in science. But a good friend of mine uh, came to me and said, I think you'd prefer geoscience better, and that's where I ended up, and I ditched the chemistry. <laughs> With good reason. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> um, so as part of my undergrad, I had the opportunity to go on exchange, so I took that one by the reins, and I went overseas for a year to the UK, where I finished my arts degree. Um, and then I came back here and I had one subject left for my science degree. And pure chance landed me in geophysics. And I found that that was 
where I wanted to be. That, that was my niche. That's what I got. I understood. I looked at it and I went, yeah, I can do this. So after that one subject, I had six months to kill between uh, undergrad and honours and I took that chance to do a bit of a holiday and help out some of the PhD students with their research in New Zealand. And that was a really good opportunity for me to take a break from undergrad because I needed it and to sort of do something a little bit different and to see what um, honours was going to be like helping out that PhD candidate. So geophysics, if you're wondering, because it's kind of a scary word, um, concerns the physical properties of the Earth and the processes that gets them there. So my honours project looks at magnetic data, gravity data, uh, seismic information, radiometrics, IP and EM. Um, and I integrate these data sets with observations I made during my research in the field to help build a picture of what's happening beneath the surface of the Earth. So that's just a short summary of what I do. Um, in the six months I had off, I also came into uni and voluntarily participated in the research project that they offer at third year in geoscience. And that was a really good way for me to keep my finger on the pulse and a bit of an ear to the ground about what projects and things I might like. If you're wondering what those images are, there are that top one is a magnetic image. This is my field area. Um, and you can see the magnetic highs in pink. And this is a black and white, uh, it's called a tilt derivative, but basically it, it brings out the features in that magnetic material. So this is my field area up to the north of Australia. Um, my honours project is sponsored by industry, and I'm very fortunate that it is. Um, they help cover the costs of my flights and stuff like that. But they also, it also gives me good exposure to industry professionals and what they do day-to-day um, -day life as a geologist. So I spent three weeks up there and I uh, had some time in the core shed looking at drill core and stuff like that. I went out to the mines. I visited several different mines while I was up there and I took samples and made my own observations of that field area which currently is not very well understood or not very well explored. Um, the coursework component of uh, my honours consists of four courses um, and they're shared between universities all over the country. So I, I can fly, I flew to Perth and I went to Bermagui with Monash, um, which gives us the opportunity as well to sort of mix with other academics and see how different universities do the way that they do things, because it is different. And each university has different specialties, um, so something that uh, you can't learn at Monash, maybe you'll learn better somewhere else. Uh, a couple more images from my fieldwork. So again, that black and white one is another magnetic one, and the coloured one is radiometric data. So geophysics has really important applications in Australia where a lot of our, um, our features are covered by sediments. We're a really old part of the continent assembly. We're really old crust and there's a lot of sediment cover which hides all the important stuff like gold and diamonds and whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, Mike's touched on this already. But honours has been a really important year for me in terms of um, probably the biggest thing I've got out of it is the relationships that I've developed with not only my peers, but my supervisors, um, my industry supervisors. I've had the opportunity to network in Melbourne and in Perth uh, through industry nights and things like that. So it gives you exposure. And that's really important because you might find that whilst your honours project isn't what you wanted to do, and like I'm interested in mine, it's a really interesting part of the world, and I've found something that's really piqued my interest more than anything else. It's maybe not where I 100% wanted to be. But being able to speak to other academics and industry professionals, I can sort of see where the science is going and see where I can fit myself into that, which is really nice. Um, yeah, it increases your employability. Um, you develop a lot of critical thinking skills. Time management skills. If you think you're good at time management now, you're probably wrong. <laughs> Um, I went through undergrad as sort of standard student. I worked a couple of jobs, did my undergrad. I was like, this is easy, no sweat. Um, then I got to honours and I had to quit one of my jobs and realised that I had to be at uni, like a nine to five job. Honours is hard. Honours is full time work, but it's really rewarding because you find something new and it's really exciting and it's so much more satisfying than going back to Chadston and working in retail. <laughs> um, going forward, I'm thinking at the moment I'm leaning really towards doing a PhD in geophysics and structural geology again. Um, probably not in the same area. I think there's a lot of 
really interesting parts of the world and a PhD in further study would give me the opportunity and exposure to those. But um, I would also like to take another break and do a bit more travel or a bit more work or something like that. So there's lots of opportunities and I'm still not set on it, but um, a PhD is probably the way forward for me. And I think we're having question time later. So I'll skip that. Cool. And that was all. Second in our legendary lineup is Justin Porano. A round of applause for Justin. Thanks. Cheers. How's it going, everybody? Um, this is going to be very different because, unlike Casey, uh, my lab is essentially my desk. I'm in maths. Um, so I don't have any awesome field photos. Maybe they're photos of the maths department. Maybe they might be awesome. Um, so the first and most important question that I always get asked, yeah, or the most common question is, what does a maths student even do in honours? Um, so for me, it's really a lot of, you do a lot of coursework because you need to do a lot of coursework. Uh, if you think you're going to go straight ahead from third year maths and quickly do a project in something, especially for me, which is in pure maths, it's probably not going to happen because you need to do a lot of coursework. And that's just natural. Uh, we've got over 100 years of mathematics that you need to learn in about one, or not a year, but you need to catch up on. So maybe some things. So what is it that I do, essentially? Well, a lot of problem solving, lots of proofs. Uh, some of you might know what that is, but essentially problem solving is a big deal. Um, I do a lot of learning and understanding. I read a lot. I have to obviously do problems on that, test myself on it. You do tests in classes and coursework and exercises and that. Um, but for the research component, the thesis component, it's a little bit different. It's more you try to apply a lot of the good ideas and you end up with a lot of bad ideas. You try to apply that to solve some sort of problem that you've got. And for me, that involves a lot of books to read and to learn. And I can't stress enough that everything that you have done previously, like you might not think that the first year math unit that you did or the first year physics unit that you did was that useful or something in there wasn't that useful. I can't tell you how many times I've looked back and realized if I only just sort of thought this was a bit more important, I would have been fine. I wouldn't have had to have reviewed this thing. So really, everything that you have done in maths or physics, or I'm sure it's true in the other courses as well, is important. And you'll be continually applying that to do your honors thesis. Um, and the next bit as well, I do a lot of writing too. That's maybe something that people don't really talk about too much, but you do a lot of writing. You write thesis. Um, the mid, at mid-year, you have to hand in a literature review. So that's 20-odd you know, pages, 30-odd pages of writing. And the other thing is we discuss a lot. So there's not, there's not going to be typically a lot of people in a maths honours or even a pure maths honours, but those people that you have are all like you. They all have an interest in maths. They all are doing sort of a similar coursework to you. They might be doing wildly different projects, but you can have a good discussion with them and learn a lot from them. So maybe a little more into the nitty gritty, what exactly do I do or are doing right now? So my honours is in pure maths. Uh, semester one, there's some, you do a lot of coursework. Most of your coursework is done in that first semester, and I think that's similar to physics, where essentially all your coursework is in the first semester. Um, so there's some of my topics that I've done, some diff geometry, some measure theory, topology. They're just fancy words, really. And project. You do your project. So your goal at the end of first semester is to hand in a literature review, where you basically look at the literature related to your project, try to compile it, and discuss um, which of these uh, which of these are going to be useful to you as you move forward into second semester. So second semester is now, and 
as Mike said, you know, there's only six weeks left, so it is a bit scary. Uh, in maths, I've still got some coursework units to do. But fortunately, yes, they're difficult, but there's not very many people in there. So this goes back to um, being able to discuss with friends a lot. We have a, in maths, we have a room that we have. It's a maths honors room, very small. There's like a big chalkboard on the wall and a whiteboard, and you'll always find someone in there that can help you out, or you can help them out if they're having something, some difficulty. And as well, in these two semester, semester two units that I've got, it's just basically me and two other people. So there's not very many people. It's not like a big lecture theater anymore. And everyone helps everybody else. Um, there's also a source of recreational maths in there as well, because I think a few weeks ago I went in there and some guys were trying to calculate the um, number of combinations in the Create Your Taste by Maccas. So it was a big number, but you know, sometimes you can have some fun that's unrelated to what you're actually doing in honours. Um, my background was uh, a four-year course, Bachelor of Science Advanced, so done the bachelor's now. Um, I did maths and physics. My entire thing was going through undergrad. With, I did not know if I wanted to do maths or physics. There was this, like, this internal conflict within me where I wasn't sure if mathematics or physics was my calling. I'm still not sure, but I know that I want to do more maths because I want to apply that hopefully one day to some physics. So maybe I should ask, so what is my project essentially? Well, because it's in pure maths, there's theorems, results, and that. You do a lot of reading. Essentially, what I'm looking at is a little bit more physics style, so a little bit more applied. Um, I try to blow stuff up. That's probably the best way I can explain it. Um, it's in general relativity, so maybe some of you have heard of that. It's Einstein's theory of gravity, essentially. And specifically, in numerical relativity, when you want to try to put these equations in a computer, you have difficulties because they're very complicated. But one way you can do that is it introduces some quantities that you can play around with. And what we've found is there's a sort of a one-to-one -one correspondence between these things that you do by trying to put them into a computer and some solutions to some fluids equations, so the motions of some fluids. And the nice thing about this is for the first time, it's actually a physical meaning. It gives physical meaning to these sort of nebulous things that you just have to help, help you put them in a computer. So what I want to do, well, what I'm trying to do is trying to see where this one-to-one -one correspondence is valid, when you can do it, and when it doesn't work, which is blowing it up. And that's sort of what I've been doing for the past few weeks, trying to blow it up. Um, so general, general advice, well, why do honours essentially? You get to do research, so you might not do what I'm doing. You might do something like Casey, which is more field work, which is really interesting. Um, otherwise, you, you, know, you direct your interests more. So you go d deeper into these fields, that, and you find, in fact, all these other fields open up to you that you didn't realize existed before. So f specifically for maths, you get opened up to all these new fields, and that's eye-opening. That's really, really eye-opening. And of course, you learn some deep maths or learn some deep theory related to whatever you're looking at. And finally, well, for me, it's difficult, very difficult. But there's people there to help you. Um, if you just work really hard, you'll be fine. And it's a very supportive environment, essentially. So post honors for me is uh, hopefully looking for a PhD somewhere or masters as well to get some more coursework into me. Okay, so thank you. Third in our legendary lineup is Sharan Prakash. Uh, round of applause.
All right, thanks everyone. Uh, so, yeah, as you can probably tell, I, I did honors in biology. Um, my background is that I did a, a science arts double degree. Uh, my majors are in genetics and philosophy. Um, I'm doing honors in biology, obviously. Uh, and at this point, I'm, I'm interested in a research career. Uh, not everybody in my cohort um, wants to do research, but um, I think they've all found honors challenging but rewarding, as, as has been mentioned already. So what's my project about? Uh, basically, I'm, I'm, I'm studying a molecule that's involved in signaling between maternal cells and uh, the embryo. So you can see here, there's a, there's a picture, picture of, a, of a fly embryo. Now, um, a lot of you might not know if you haven't, haven't read anything about genetics, but a lot of the principles of developmental biology were worked out in, a, in the fruit fly, Sophlomel and Gaster. Um, and if there are any biologists here thinking about doing genetics or fruit fly research, um, there is a book called Time, Love, Memory, um, which is, is really fun and, and tells you all about this. So I know everyone's a science nerd. Um, but essentially, um, the, the problem is, how does, how does an embryo, uh, which is you know, filled with a bunch of cells, they've all got the same DNA, they've all got the same genetic information, how does it know uh, which, which end is anterior posterior? How does it acquire that positional information to pattern the embryo and go on to uh, form, form an organism with, with all these different parts? Um, and if you're an animal, uh, this starts out in the womb. So, so this, this information is actually provided by maternal cells. And so the, the, the problem in this broader sort of embryology field is how does that information travel from maternal cells surrounding the embryo to the embryo itself? And the lab I'm working in has, has discovered uh, a molecule called torso-like, which is very important in uh, helping to specify the fates of cells at the very end of either embryo. Now, at this point, no, nobody knows anything about um, how this molecule works exactly. Um, people know a little bit about how it's related to um, other molecules in vertebrates um, and so on. But essentially, w w what I've got is something that's, that's very new. Um, and it's very exploratory. and uh, to some extent, there's some uncertainty about that, and you can make you feel a little bit unsure, but it's also kind of exciting, um, and it'll be really interesting to see what happens in the end. Um, and, and the other thing that you get out of um, doing biology honors, um, particularly um, in the sort of genetics and molecular biology fields, is uh, exposure to a, a bunch of analytical techniques, and I'll talk a little bit more about um, why that might be good later on. So the structure of the honors year in biology, um, it, it can change from year to year, but, but this is more or less the structure of it. Your thesis is worth by far the most. Um, from what I understand, there's not nearly as much coursework as the maths and physics people um, seem to have. It's, it's all sort of done uh, during the beginning of the year. Um, and in particular, you, you get to do uh, this, these you get to go to these seminars uh, and, and write up some abstracts about them, and I'll talk about why that was really good as well later on. So uh, things that people have talked about already, why do honors? Um, it's, it's a real confidence builder. So you're, you're forced to do presentations. You're forced to write and communicate your work. Um, in biology this year, one of your examiners is not from your field. So you, you, need, to, you need to sort of think very carefully about how you know, keeping it technical and not dumbing it down, but communicating it to somebody who is clever but doesn't have background knowledge. So that's, that's a challenging and, and good thing to do. The other thing is laboratory techniques. So many of you will have done, you know, second and third year labs um, where, yeah, you'd, you'd like it to work, but if it doesn't really work, it's fine. You copy off somebody else. So everything, everything is sort of take, taken care of, and there's not a lot riding on you getting things right. And to some extent, you, you don't have the time to get things right. Here, it, it, you, you need to get it right. You need to do it. Um, and so you'll have a real intensity about how you're, how you're working. Uh, and you know, if, if, if you really have that determination, you'll come out of it feeling like, I, I can work in a lab, and I can produce data and get results, right? Um, which, if, if you're doing any sort of experimental work, is absolutely uh, important and more, more challenging than than you might think originally, right? It's much more than just the protocol. Um, it's also a chance to show that you, you've got initiative and you have the potential for independent thought. So you'll be, you'll be given a project, right? And your, your supervisors are very 
clever people, but they're also very busy people. Uh, and a really good thing is if you can, if you really try to understand your project, um, think really carefully about it. There may be issues in the experimental design. You could say, well, maybe we could do this differently. If you're in a lab that's, that's you know, supportive and it's a good environment, they'll, they'll love that. They'll love how engaged you are. You'll find it really rewarding as well, and you'll feel more um, confident. Uh, it, it also shows, you know, um, people earlier were talking about employability. Um, you, can, you can say that, you know, I was, given, I was given this project, and at the end of the year, I, I produced this deliverable, right, even if it didn't necessarily work. Um, I, I had to do something that needed a lot of patience and determination, and I had to be very careful and methodical, um, and I did it. Right? So. so yeah, my, my experience of honors, is, as, as everyone said, it's very hard work. Um, but I, I found that uh, doing experiments is, is really fun. So I'd done a couple of short research projects, but it was not really time to get anything done. Um, I'm the kind of person that majors in philosophy, so I like to sit around and think a lot. Um, and I was like, oh, you know, sitting around pipetting things is a waste of time. But um, when you actually start to get results in and everything, it's, it's really quite, it's quite fun. Um, and as some other people touched on before, a supportive lab environment is important. Um, talk to people, see if you get along with the demonstrators and so on. A couple of highlights. Um, the seminar series, so you need to attend a seminar every week or, or, or thereabouts. Uh, and people from all around the country, sometimes internationally, you know, people from really huge um, universities, very well-known people, they, they come and give you uh, a seminar to the whole school. You get excellent exposure to lots of different areas in biology. If you do do honors in biology, or if, if there's seminar series going on in any other discipline, uh, I say attend as many as possible. I also got to go to a scientific conference, so it was a, it was a small friendly conference. It was just in Warburton, um, but it was, it was really fun, you know. I, I got to find out what that was all about, um, and that was all expenses paid. So I'm currently looking for PhD opportunities. It's, it's not exactly in the field that, I was, that I've done my honors project in. That doesn't matter so much. Um, I'd say one thing that might be good to do is during your honors year, keep reading papers, right? Um, I, I actually joined a, a journal club that was run by some other labs. And as a result of that, you know, no, nobody's going to stop you from doing that so long as you manage your time well. Um, and as a result of that, I found this whole new area that I'm interested in, and I might like to do a PhD there. And um, yeah, so I, I don't know if this should be the last slide. So just general advice is to work really hard early in the year. Be as organized as you can. People talked about time management will be more demanding in that regard. Don't leave thinking about next year until you, after you submit your thesis. So there'll be deadlines coming not very long after honors. So try to think about that a little bit before uh, honors gets, you know, the end of the year gets too intense. Um, and yeah, the more, the more effort and issue you put in, the more rewarding it'll be. Get, in, get involved in things around the school, um, wherever you can. Um, and yeah, I, I guarantee you'll have a great time. Thank you. Mark is our final speaker who will tell you about important details that you need. Uh, round of applause for Margie. Hi everyone, thanks for coming. Good to see quite a few of you here. Um, I get to do the fun admin stuff, which is a bit dry, but it's important, so um, bear with me. Um, okay, so there's um, a lot of disciplines available at honor, in honours, and of course you normally do it um, in the major study um, area of study that you do in your undergrad degree, though that's not necessarily true for the biomedical sciences. You might do a major in physiology and do um, honours in developmental biology, for example, because there's so much overlap. Um, oh, just a couple of notes. Um, Mark was talking about some uh, most disciplines being able to be studied part-time. There are some exceptions. So um, computational science and all the biological sciences areas they have to be done full-time. Um, I think this, most of this is really covered. Um, a lot of students come in straight after their science degree because they, they sort of go straight in to study what they've um, already been doing. Sometimes you might continue on uh, with a research project that you might have done in third year. 
Um, but you can, as Mike covered, um, you, you can um, actually take a year or two off and then apply for honours. You don't actually defer honours, you will apply for it when you are ready to commence it. So you've got five years from when you actually finish the relevant level three units um, that, are, that you need for honours. Um, double degree students, you could actually do 144 credit points of your double degree, uh, finish the science requirements, put arts, for example, on hold for a year on intermission and, and do your science honours you, before finishing off the other degree. Um, I think people have emphasised the, the students and, and Mike what a difficult year honours is, so you, you wouldn't be doing it concurrently really with any other studies unless there's absolutely exceptional circumstances, but it's not normal. Um, I've already done the five year thing. Um, all right, so you, you have to have, by the time you commence honours, you have to have been course completed from um, Bachelor of Science or a relevant degree, um, 144 credit points. I've already done the double degree um, requirements. Um, any science scholars here today? Okay, so um, completed your science scholars program, your course completed from that, and you'll um, go into a science scholar honours program. Bachelor of Science Advanced Research, Bachelor of Biotechnology students, and Bachelor of Environmental Science. Even though honours is, is the last year of your degree, you still obviously have to put an application in for it because you have to meet the, the requirements. And you've got to have completed 144 credit points of your coursework and all the stage one to three um, science requirements. Okay, so in most disciplines, you've got to have at least a 70% average just in the, um, the 24 points of the relevant level three units in your major. So for genetics, for example, you want to get um, at least 70% average in those four level three genetics units. Um, there are a couple of exceptions, biological sciences, you need really at least 72, 73 because the projects are quite competitive um, there's, and there's not, there's not a lot of um, resources available necessary, necessarily for everybody. Um, and uh, psychology, I don't know if anyone's here looking at doing psychology honours, but those requirements are a lot higher, you need at least an 80% average to apply for the psychology honours. Is any biotechnology students here? Um, you guys also need to, but BTH 3012 needs to be included in the four relevant uh, level three units. So if you're doing chemistry major, it'd be three chemistry level three units um, and that unit as well. Um, and offers are made, even if you get 70% average, you may not necessarily get the project that you want because there is competition for some of them um, and it's subject to eligibility of resources such as super. Uh, supervision. Um, I think I've already covered that bit. Um, application process, that's where we come in. So I work in the uh, science student services area just down the, just down the pathway there. I've probably seen a few of you. Um, so you um, will hand your application form into us for the most part. Uh, it's still a hard copy application form. Uh, you can get it on, on the web um, and we've got, we'll have hard copy forms available from next week and it'll be online next week for you to download. Any international students here? No, um, but there is a slightly separate process for the international applicants. All that um, information is available on the website as well. You need to, um, you need to apply through Mon uh, Monash International as well. Um, I've already uh, covered psychology um, and international. You probably already started doing this, but you haven't already, start looking at supervisors now um, and also talk to the honours coordinator about what you might do in honours. Um, I think I mentioned that, I, I don't know, if are you guys, is anyone doing a third year research project at the moment? Because um, sometimes it might end up being that you, um, you might have the same supervisor and continue on with what you're doing sort of in your honours. Um, you'll find that quite useful if you've done that project um, when, you, when you actually commence honours. Um, okay, so, but before you get anyone to sign anything, you need to come and see us just to make sure that you will be, you will be pending these requirements, um, that you have, you're on track to meeting the 70% average and that you've met all your levels uh, one to three requirements. Um, most departments and schools um, will have their own forms that you need to fill out 
to apply for projects and you usually would need um, potential supervisors to sign, sign off on those forms. Um, it's quite a long application form. There's lots of checklists and things like that on it. So just make sure you read that form quite carefully before you um, start getting things signed, signed off. Okay, Bachelor of Biotech, there was a couple of you. You also need to get your form signed off by your course coordinator, which is Melanie Pritchard, after the uh, Honours Discipline Coordinator has signed off on that form. Um, if you're applying for projects um, at some of the different institutes, um, you also need to get your form signed off by the relevant um, coordinators in those areas in Section C. Well, we've already got the application forms in our office printed out ready to go and it'll be on the web next week. Um, the details are there. Okay, um, try and get your forms in um, by Friday the 13th of November. You've got a bit of time to um, get things organised between now and then. I realise you're studying for exams, but um, that gives us a chance to process all of the details. Scholarships, it's very important for many people. Um, they, we still have the Monash University Jubilee Scholarships, um, which is $6,000 for the uh, full-time study load. Um, you, you, you're looking at sort of an 85% average to be eligible for, for these scholarships. And this is all um, available to apply online. Some of the schools and departments, such as chemistry um, and e a and &E, do have their own scholarships as well that you can apply for. You can't have a, a Jubilee scholarship and a school department scholarship, it's one or the other. So have a, have a talk to them about what scholarships they have. Um, look at the scholarships website for the details of how you apply for these scholarships and what the um, bursary entails. Okay, some school and departments have all, their, ha, all have their own honours information sessions. Some of them have already had them um, and some of them are yet to have them. I think Physics have got some flyers here uh, for their, their sessions, so you can pick one up if you're wanting to apply for Physics or Astrophysics. Um, so just check the web for, for the specific um, school and department websites to see when their sessions are and they might email you as well. Um, yeah, just talk to the honours coordinator if you have missed the session that you would have liked to go to. Um, we're actually recording this session as well, so you can go back and have a look at it if you've missed anything or um, friends of yours that couldn't come, just refer them to this. And um, I think that that's about it. Have you, if anyone's got any questions for me, Mike, David, we've got two minutes. <laughs> so. We can talk out there with questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for the round of applause. Brilliant speakers. Go forth and be legendary. Thanks a lot. We really, really appreciate it.
you missed it? So Thank you.